good day and welcome to my channel. I'm John. What you're seeing here is the Golden Girls Bingo Party Game and you could win it. Yes, I'd like to announce that in my next Golden Girls video, soon to be released, will be the details of which will be explained in that video how you can win this Golden Girls Bingo Party Game. So stay in touch. In this edited down segment from the long version, this is on Betty White. Betty Marion White was born in Oak Park, Illinois on January 17, 1922. She was the only child of Christine Tess, a homemaker, and Horace Logan White, a lighting company executive from Michigan. White's family moved to Alhambra, California in 1923 when she was a little over a year old and later to Los Angeles during the Great Depression. White attended Horace Main Elementary School in Beverly Hills and Beverly Hills High School, graduating in 1939. Her interest in wildlife was sparked by family vacations to the Sierra Nevada. White pursued an interest in writing. She wrote and played the lead in a graduation play at Horace Mann School and discovered her interest in performing. Inspired by her idols, Jeanette McDonald and Nelson Eddy, she decided to pursue a career as an actress. As the medium of television itself was still in development, White found work modeling. After the United States entered World War II in 1941, White volunteered for the American Women Voluntary Service. Her assignment included driving a PX truck with military supplies to the Hollywood Hills. Jumping forward a little bit, from 1952, White hosted and produced her own daily talk show, a variety show, called The Betty White Show. She even met Lucille Ball. And the two quickly struck up a friendship over their accomplishments in taking on the male-dominated television business in the 1950s and even competed against one another on various game shows. Betty had married three times. She met her first husband, Dick Barker, a United States Army Air Force pilot. After the war, the couple married and moved to Ohio. He wanted to embrace the simpler life but Betty did not enjoy this. They returned to Los Angeles and divorced within a year. In 1947, she married Lane Allen, a Hollywood talent agent. They divorced in 1949 because he wanted a family, but she wanted a career. On June 14, 1963, White married television host and personality Alan Ludden, whom she had met on his game show, Password. He proposed to White at least twice before she accepted. Alan Ludden died from stomach cancer in June 9, 1981 in Los Angeles, California. And she never remarried. When asked the reason for this in an interview with Larry King, White responded by saying, Once you've had the best, who needs the rest? In the United States, she was the first woman to produce a sitcom, Life with Elizabeth. Jumping forward to 1973, White made several appearances in the fourth season of The Mary Tyler Moore Show as the man-hungry Sue Ann Nivens. Although considering the role a highlight of her career, White described the character's image as icky sweet. <laughs> The Mary Tyler Moore Show's producers made Sue Ann Nivens a regular character and brought White into the main cast starting with the fifth season. Again, after many shows, too many to get into with this video, we jump to 1985. White scored her second signature role 
and the biggest hit of her career as the St. Olaf, Minnesota native Rose Nyland on The Golden Girls. Hi girls, what time does Clayton get here? Oh, any minute now. Oh, we better put out the welcome mat. <laughs> we don't have a welcome mat. What about the one Dorothy says is at the foot of your bed? <laughs> Also a supporter and advocate of gay rights, saying there are gay relationships that are more solid than some heterosexual ones. She added, I think it's fine if they want to get married. I don't know why people get so anti-something. I'll bet I could sit here for a minute and tell you what your type is. I'm good at this. You just give me your honest reactions when people go by. That's how I'll tell. Okay. Here comes one. Go. No, too thin. Here comes one. Too short? Next. <laughs> Clayton. Clayton, you're not playing fair. That's a man. <laughs> That's a man and you're a man. <laughs> you're both men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gay, Rose. It's just so hard to tell Blanche the truth. Clayton, you're selling your sister short. Now, at times, Blanche can be very understanding and compassionate and forgiving. Get away from my baby brother, you cradle-snatching, empty-headed, two-faced <laughs> dummy! <laughs> And then at other times, she can be a real bitch. <laughs> White was a pet enthusiast and animal welfare advocate who worked with organizations including the Los Angeles Zoo Commission, the Morris Animal Foundation, and the African Wildlife Foundation. She produced and hosted a series, The Pet Set, which spotlighted celebrities and their pets. Uh, hold it, Rose. I need some advice, too. You need advice from me? Yeah, frightening, isn't it? <laughs> it's about Dreyfus. Okay. What about Dreyfus? The other day I thought he was lost, so I got a second dog, and then the first one came back. Sophia, are you kidding me? <laughs> Come see for yourself. Wow, two Dreyfuses. No, one Dreyfus. That's the point. I want to return the second. But I don't know how to tell which is which. That's where you come in. What do I do? Well, there's only one thing I can think of. We used to do it back on the farm, and I may be a little rusty, but I guess it's worth a shot. Whatever it is, do it. I'm desperate. Okay. Here goes. Dreyfus, come here, boy. <laughs> This one's Dreyfus. <laughs> Leaving us on the morning of December 31st, 2021, in the Brentwood neighborhood of Los Angeles from a stroke she had back on Christmas Day. She was two and a half weeks from her 100th birthday. Her remains were cremated and given to Glenn Kaplan. Lillian, I have some really good news. She's napping. What news? Well, I spent the day going around town, and I think I found the perfect place for her. Really? Well, it's not as nice as Shady Pines, but the staff really seems to care, and the, and the patients are happy. Well, Rose, that is fantastic. And it won't cost any more than Sunny Pastures? Well, that's the one little problem. Lillian's benefits won't quite cover the costs. She'll need another 150 a month. Little problem? Rose, how could you get our hopes up like that? I mean, who has an extra $150 a month? I do. What? I do. We'll use that bonus check. I got it work. Why don't don't you try and talk me out of it now. My mind is made up. Blanche, are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. Lily ought to be covered for at least two years with that money in my bosom account. <laughs> I'm 
proud of you, but why the sudden change of heart? Having Lillian here made me realize that my problems are pretty trite. I suppose something like this does make your breasts seem rather small. <laughs> Well, sort of. <laughs> well, then that's that. Louise's problems are solved. Isn't this terrific? <laughs> terrific? Ma, this is wonderful. I mean, this is a real happy ending. So, how come I don't feel all that happy? I don't know. Is it because we know that Lillian's just plain lucky that a lot of old people do slip through the cracks and are forgotten? Uh, and maybe it may not be too long until... We are elderly, I say, hubs. The expression, the best laid plans, carries the connotation that one should not expect for things to always turn out to plan. I know, girls. Let's make a pact that we'll always take care of each other, that we'll <laughs> never desert each other no matter what. <laughs> you can count on me. But honey. you think it's going to be that easy getting rid of me, Rose? <laughs> that was rhetorical, Rose. <laughs> Oh, but what a comforting thought, knowing you'll never be alone. And listen, what the hell, if we do have to go to a nursing home, let's all go together. <laughs> <laughs> but what happens when there's only one of us left? Don't worry, I can take care of myself. <laughs> Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. I know a poem that might help. It goes, never ever give up your dreams, even when they're doused in sorrow, because even though they seem far away, they could come true tomorrow.